My name is Brian Schmidt and I'm an ARC Laureate Fellow and I am a node leader here at ANU and theme leader of the dark theme of Castro. I always like asking big questions and the big question for me when I came to Australia was what is the ultimate fate of the universe? Now we know the universe is expanding that's something Edwin Hubble did in 1929 and we suspected that the universe should be slowing down due to gravity. Now gravity in the universe from all the way back to the 1930s when Fritz Zwicky started looking at how much gravity there was in the universe compared to how much light we always had this idea of dark matter. There was always missing stuff. We could see its gravity, but we couldn't see it. So what we wanted to do because of this dark matter, we wanted to measure how the, the gravitational effect of everything in the universe pulled on the universe and whether or not the universe would expand forever and the dark matter would eventually slow it down and stop the expansion and cause the universe to collapse or whether or not the universe is just going to keep expanding forever because there wasn't enough stuff in it. So my whole premise was to measure how much stuff there was in the universe. Now when we did that in 1998 we discovered that the universe wasn't slowing down at all, it was speeding up. And so that meant not only was there dark matter which we could see from galaxies motions and stars motions and galaxies, we had a universe full of something else, dark energy dark energy being energy that seems to be tied to space itself. Energy that by Einstein's equations of general relativity makes gravity push rather than pull. And so it was sort of by accident that I started studying dark energy. We didn't expect it to be there. So we live in a universe which is 95 and a half percent of stuff we do not understand dark matter, dark energy. So the atoms that we can see, four and a half percent of the universe, is what we can guide our experiments with because that's how we're going to test the universe and see how it's working. So Castro's dark theme is a series of big experiments to go through and probe dark matter and dark energy. What we want to do on dark matter is we want to map the gravity across the cosmos much more accurately than we've ever been able to do before. We want to see how dark matter is spread across the cosmos and how it pulls and tugs and make sure that the model we have for the universe, which we call the standard model, is right. So we're going to be mapping out how galaxies are moving relative to each other across the cosmos. And so we expect that as we get to bigger and bigger scales in the universe, when we look at billions of light years, we expect the galaxies more or less not to be moving relative to each other. We expect them to be smoothly expanding with the universe. But there's indications that may not be right, that the galaxies may actually be moving in sort of like streams across the sky. And so by looking and mapping out galaxies positions and distances, Castro is going to be able to make those measurements of the motions of galaxies to a level that we've never been able to do before. But we're also trying to do some other experiments on dark energy to measure the acceleration of the universe more accurately than we've been able to do before. And we're going to do that by not looking at the distant universe like I have done in the past, but look closer to home because the uncertainties of our measurements now are that it's been very difficult to get large numbers of nearby objects. Supernovae are very rare and it's only by looking at a long ways away we can, we can see enough of space to capture lots of them. But with our new facilities here in Australia, we're going to be able to look at a lot of nearby space, find lots of nearby objects, and thereby measure what's going on very accurately in the nearby universe so that we can more accurately compare it to the distant universe. So for mapping out the, uh, the motions across the sky, we're going to be using the SkyMapper telescope, which is a a new a wide field telescope located at Coonabara Brand uh, up in uh, central New South Wales and that optical telescope which uh, was enabled partially by the fact that my observatory here at Mount Stromo burned to the ground in 2003 well using in the aftermath we've been able to get this new telescope built and this telescope will allow us to image every part of the southern sky 
and figure out how bright galaxies are and compare that with radio observations that are going to be done with a new telescope in Western Australia, a radio telescope called the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder. And that telescope, which we call ASCAP for short, it's a bit of a mouthful, uh, as I just demonstrated, uh, that telescope, ASCAP, will look at these galaxies in radio across the whole southern sky, and we can compare the radio and optical to very accurately measure the distances to tens of thousands of objects across the southern sky. SkyMap is also going to be used to find supernovae like those that I used in the distant universe to measure the acceleration. So SkyMapper, because it can see literally the entire southern sky to a depth 10 million times fainter than your human eye can see, that allows us to find lots of these exploding stars, which just has not been possible in the past. And those stars will be the basis of what we compare with uh, experiments on bigger telescopes that look at smaller pieces of sky much, much more faintly and see to the edge of the visible universe. So Castro has, uh, is really quite an interesting organization because we have a number of senior people like myself who are world leaders in the field here in Australia, but then we have been able to recruit a bunch of postdocs from around Australia and, uh, and the world. So these are people who are sort of maybe 25 to 35 years old who are just uh, doing their first couple jobs after getting their PhD. And so those people are really the engine room of our experiment. They're the ones who uh, really have the time and the focus and the new ideas to go out and make these experiments work in detail. And then finally we have the next generation, the students. And so here in Australia we're training up large numbers of students and by integrating the postdocs and the senior people, we think we can really train those students up in detail to, to do these new experiments. Um, and, you know, because they require creativity, but they require technical skills. And those new technical skills of how to use the computers to their fullest are something that's uh, probably best learned when you're young because it's a real, it's a real new way of thinking and doing. by bringing together many of uh, Australia's uh, premier researchers and then resourcing them to you know, go in and effectively communicate to uh, schools, produce um, you know, videos and animations and things that explain what we do, we can connect to the broader public. But it also is going to allow us to, quite frankly, make bigger and better discoveries, which I think will be, you know, enthuse people around Australia and around the globe. And so ultimately that's what we're there to do. We're there to learn about the universe and tell people about what we do. And that's what Castro's mission is mission is and it's gonna you know essentially be have the resources to allow to, us to do that effectively.